Hi, in this part of the Blender beginner course I'll explain rigging process for advanced animation in Blender. Also don't forget to watch the earlier parts. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Store website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackcave.com. First, let's add a simple object like a sphere. I'll work on a more complex model later. Smooth the object, then scale it up along the z-axis. I want to rotate and move each part of this model separately. To do this, I need something called a rig. This rig will connect and work with the object. Press Shift A and add an armature. The armature is inside the model, but if I move it out, I can see it clearly now. We need to keep it inside the object, but go to the rig settings and then to the viewport display. Then turn on the in front option. Now I can see the rig inside the object. This is the end point of the rig, and this is the start point. All other rigs, or better to say joints, will be created based on this main joint. Actually, this is the root or main joint, and everything starts from here. The other joints are children of it. I can easily move and rotate it by selecting each point in edit mode, which you can activate by pressing the tab key. Now I need to add more joints and extend the rig. To do this, I'll use the extrude tool on the current joint. First, let's create the vertical joints. Let's move it a little, then apply extrude by pressing the E key. You can easily create joints, and having more joints gives you more control over the object. But joints actually affect the polygons. We can check the faces by selecting the object and going into edit mode. The polygons are not too high and each joint can only affect a row of edges. So we can apply subdivide to increase the number of faces. I explained subdivide in the previous parts. It's easy, just right click on the mesh and select it. Now the joints have more flexibility. The shape of the rig is up to you. Wherever you want control, you can add a joint. For example, if you have a humanoid character, you need to add small joints to the fingers. We'll do that in this part. Now we use the endpoint of the main joint to add the bottom joints. Now it's a complete rig and we can add more joints wherever we need. Now let's add joints to right and left. We have a problem here, the joints are not symmetrical. I want something that when I apply changes to the right side, it automatically applies to the left as well. We can select the joint, right click and choose symmetrize. Or we can activate the symmetry tool at the top along the x-axis. To rotate and move each joint, I need to go to pose mode. Now I can change the rotation of each joint. If I move a joint with the G key, it rotates. The move operation only affects the root joint. Now, let's combine the rig with the object. Select the mesh, then select the rig by holding the shift key. Next, press ctrl P. Next, press with automatic weights. 
This will parent the rig to the mesh. Now, if I move the rig, the mesh will move as well. Now let's try it in pose mode. Each joint has its own faces that can be modified. The question is, how do we change the control points of each joint? It's applied automatically, but can we modify it? With the object selected, go to the data section. Each bone or joint defines a modification area. To see each area and its effectiveness, I need to go to weight paint mode. In weight paint mode, you can paint on a mesh. Red areas mean full control, yellow is medium, green is low, and blue means no control. For example, you can see how much control each joint has or each specific part. For example, let's modify the color of this area. We need to check the weight, where a value of zero removes the color. You can also just brush radius using the F key. I'm painting randomly. Now let's go back to pose mode and see the changes. The effectiveness of this joint has completely changed. Now let's animate it. To do this, activate the other key button. Then move or rotate the joint to add keyframes. I explained the animation in detail in the previous parts. Next, I need to add another keyframe at frame 40, for example. And now I have an animation. We just need to apply animations to test rig and weight paints. Now let's add rig for a human character. This object is more complex and includes multiple sub-objects, such as hair, cloths, and more. Add an armature and activate in front just like before. We need to place the joint in the middle of the character. Right here. It's the regular way to add a rig system for a human character. Next, go to edit mode. Instead of moving it using the G key after applying extrude, you can move it using transformation tools by pressing shift space. In this way, you can move the joint in the correct direction. More joints give you more control, but one of the standard anatomies is like this. If I don't add joints to a specific part of the body, it will be affected by the nearest joint, so be careful. For the fingers, I need to duplicate a joint using Shift D instead of extending it using Extrude. Now let's adjust it and place it right on the finger. I can press right click and then select Subdivide to add more joints to the current joint. This line indicates that the finger joint is the child of this joint. I need to change its parent to the wrist joint. Select both joints and press Ctrl P. Choose Keep Offset, which means the joint will stay in its possession, just parenting it. The connected option will move the joint to the parent's possession. 
Now just press Shift to duplicate the joint. To place the joints correctly inside the object, since these joints are outside the object, I need to activate the snapping based on volume. Now the joint goes inside the object. Okay, I think that's enough. I don't want to create a full wreck. It takes too long. Now select all the objects and then select the armature. Press Ctrl P, but when I select automatic weights, it gives an error because they have multiple objects and they have weight collisions with each other. Instead, I can use another option. In the parenting menu, select weight, empty, groups. Now it's working, but I need to modify the weight paints manually for some parts. Let's test the rig in pose mode. As you can see the head bone has a weighting problem and we need to modify the weights. Let's test the fingers. Changing the weight paints take time, but it's worth it. Okay, I showed the simple rigging in Blender. The wrist, like IK handles and curve creation, are advanced topics that I'll cover in another tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.